Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel if you don't know who I am. Hi, I am Lex. It is very nice to meet you. I have a wonderful husband named Dan. We are, I guess you could say a YouTube family, I guess. I don't know. Hi, we're a YouTube family. Is, I don't know what that is. We also have two beautiful children and we have one that we are expecting, which is hi, why I'm making this video. We have a son who is three and a half and his name is Cooper and we have a daughter who is about to turn two and her name is Willa. I wanted to sit down and make a video about how I go about reducing my anxiety and stress during those very early weeks of pregnancy. And what I mean by that is when you get your positive test, to when you go and have your first official visit at the doctor and usually have your ultrasound. So in between that time, you don't really do much. There's really not a lot of like confirmation that you're still pregnant. It's still way too early to have like a lot of symptoms. Um, you obviously are not going to be feeling any kicks. I wanted to talk about how I manage my fears, worries, and concerns. And I, I guess by accident, sort of created a method that really, really works for me. Before we jump right into this video, I would love it if you could give this video a like if you're excited to watch it. And subscribe to our channel because I am very newly pregnant and we have such a wonderful journey that we're about to document. So, tiny backstory, in between my son's pregnancy and my daughter's pregnancy, I experienced a miscarriage. And while I was very nervous during my first pregnancy because... It was my first pregnancy and I didn't really know what to expect. I was very, very nervous, had a lot of anxiety when I became pregnant with my daughter, who was our rainbow baby. It was just really stressful for me. Um, I was really worried that I would miscarry again. And this is a very common thing during early pregnancy. A lot of women, you know, they get that positive test and then they're like, oh my gosh, like, you instantly have something to lose at that point and you realize like the magnitude of what you'd be losing. So this is what I do. This is my step-by-step -step process as to how I give myself reassurance and sort of just feel better about the situation. Now, the first thing that I do is I actually test super, super early. Every single one of our babies, we have been actively TTC. We've been trying to conceive. None of them were surprises in any way. So I knew my ovulation dates and I knew how many DPO I was. So I knew how many days past ovulation and I start testing around seven, eight, nine DPO. Seven DPO is way too soon. It's just me being excited and wanting to test. So I usually test then. Then eight DPO with first morning urine, more or less every pregnancy, really besides my daughter's actually, I've seen a faint line. As the tests progress, I actually continue to test. And this is why. Medically, and if you were to like ask the pregnancy test brand really this is not an actual like scientific way to check whether your hcg is increasing but many women do it including myself i will actually wait every other day and continue to test with the same brand test usually i'll do the first response test because if you go to somewhere like target or walmart they're usually around like 7.99 6.99 for a pack of two and i honestly for reassurance and to make me feel better have no issues spending that kind of money on pregnancy tests. You also have other options. There's really great tests right now on Amazon. The Pregmate is really great and Premom. I have been very impressed with Premom. You can get a 50 pack of those for, I mean, it was like $7.99. I actually got mine for $2.99 on like a day, like a deal of the day on Amazon. So you have that as an option. I test every other day because your HCG usually doubles over 48 hour period. So I will do like 9 DPO, 11 DPO, 13 DPO, 15 DPO, and so on. When I get a test where my control line is lighter than the test line, so my test line is now actually darker than the control line, I stop testing. This usually happens around like 15 to 17 DPO. In my mind, I see that and I'm like, awesome. My HCG is increasing enough where the test, it, the test strip is now pulling dye from the control line. And that's so great. That means your HCG is increasing. From this point, now I move on to step two. So I will stop testing with the first response test or in your case, whatever test you decide to be your one test that you use. And then I will start to take the clear blue weeks estimator tests. Now these are not available anymore in the United States because 
they were confusing people <laughs> which just makes me laugh because like typical americans like <laughs> anyway i'm not trying to cause a fight here but it just made me chuckle but the weeks estimator test will say pregnant and then it will say one to two weeks two to three weeks or it will say three plus weeks and the way that you can interpret those results is when it says one to two weeks that means you're three to four weeks pregnant when you are two to three that means you're four to five weeks pregnant and when you're three plus that means you're six weeks pregnant because these tests calculate from the day of ovulation the day of conception whereas a society we will say we are pregnant from the first day of our last period so there's even though technically there's still two weeks there that we're not actually even pregnant, we hadn't even ovulated yet. So that's where the confusion came in with these tests and they actually banned them in the United States. Doesn't stop me. <laughs> I had purchased these tests in the United States with my son Cooper and then by the time my I had my miscarriage slash I also had my daughter, they were not around anymore. So the first time with my daughter, I actually ordered them from Canada via eBay and they were not expensive. They were still like $14 or $15 for two. So when I get my first positive digital test, which is actually another way that I sort of reduce my anxiety. Once you see that word pregnant, it really just makes you feel like confirmed. <laughs> you feel pregnant. You're like, okay, this is the real deal. Nothing like seeing that word pregnant on that digital test. So that's actually another way that I, once my line is like a little bit dark on a first response test, then I'll also take the digital and I'll get that positive digital. When I get that positive digital, that means that my uh, HCG levels are at least at a 25. Then in whatever calendar I'm using or whatever pregnancy app I'm using, I will then go every other day and I will double that number. So, okay, so let's say I get it, you know, on a Wednesday, I get a positive digital. On a Friday, that means instead of my HCG level being 25, that means it's now 50. And then two days later, it becomes 100. Two days later, it becomes 200. Two days later, it becomes 400. Two days later, it becomes 800. And I, and I go on and on and on. So I take those numbers and I look at the clear blue information that I have, those parameters or whatever they're called. I say, okay, well around this time, I'm definitely going to be at least over this number where it says that I'll get a, a two to three weeks. Because I only get two tests in that packet, I don't wanna get a one to two weeks because I already know that I'm pregnant. So I try to wait until I would be in the window to get those that two to three week test. And then I will eventually take that test and hope for a two to three weeks. I've never not gotten it, so fingers crossed. And then I look again at my numbers and I say, okay, I'm gonna be over 1600 at this point, more or less, right? This is just an estimation. Let me go ahead and take that last clear blue test. I take that last clear blue test, it says three plus weeks. I know that my HCG is increasing. A lot of you are probably like, why don't you just go to the doctor and just get a blood test? Well, a lot of people don't wanna to go to the doctor unless it's an emergency or they absolutely have to. And a lot of people don't wanna pay, you know, whatever copay they might have to pay just to go and get those, and the blood work just to get the blood work done. Some people, um, you know, have a lot of children it's really difficult for them to like get into the the doctor's office and they're not going to do it unless there's something that's actually wrong here's sort of like a more it's a less reliable but it's a more affordable way of just trying to keep track of things and reduce your anxiety during this time also feel obligated to say if anything really goes wrong during these situations all of this could potentially just increase your anxiety instead you know let's say you don't get that two to three weeks you don't get that three plus weeks you don't get a positive digital or whatnot like you this might stress you out so I just want to go out and say that too I go into this knowing that it doesn't mean that I'm having a miscarriage or that I'm having a chemical pregnancy if I don't get a two to three weeks the first time I take a test if you're not a type A person if you're a type B person this might not be your approach but this is my approach, this makes me feel better, and I wanted to share it with other people in case it helps you guys too. So then once I get those tests and I get that three plus weeks, I actually just stop testing because at that point in my mind, there's no point. I have at least enough HCG in my system to see the three plus weeks. When I had my um, miscarriage, I was told that at least until your HCG numbers are at least a thousand, you can't see anything on an ultrasound. So for me, in my mind, I am like, okay, well, the three plus weeks has to be over 1600 um, HCG. So that means that 
next week or the week after because at three week, three plus weeks then you're already at that six week mark and usually you have your first ultrasound around seven, eight, nine weeks. Now I only have to wait about a week or so until my ultrasound. So I've now made it through those super early weeks kind of having reassurance that my HCG is increasing without needing to go to the doctor and constantly getting my blood work checked. Then you go to the ultrasound, very nerve wracking, but it's just something you do. You just show up, you go, you lay down, you pray to God and you just, you just do it. Um, and then they see the heartbeat and you know, everything is okay and you're happy and you're so relieved and you have that to hold on to now. You went and you saw the heartbeat, you heard the heartbeat, you saw your baby, everything was in the right spot. Of course, this could not be the scenario, um, but more than likely it will be, so hold on to that hope. And then from there, I actually, I have a Doppler, a handheld Doppler that I use, I'll link it down below. And I can usually find my baby's heartbeat around nine to 10 weeks, but that's because I'm like super good at <laughs> using this Doppler. But usually people can find it around like 12, 13 weeks. Um, and if you really like take the effort, you can probably find it a lot sooner than that. And then I eventually find the heartbeat. And once I find the heartbeat myself, I feel really good and relieved. And then maybe like once a week, I will check for the heartbeat and I will hear it and I will be reassured and I will feel great. And then before you know it, you start feeling the baby, the kicks and the flutters and everything. And then you have all of those movements to really hold on to until the end of the pregnancy. So. That's sort of how I go about pregnancy, especially those early weeks, just being reassured. That's my little system. Now there's actually one other thing that I do and this might completely freak you out or it might be exactly what you need, but it really helped me to see those percentages every single day. I actually stumbled across a website that broke down your percentage of possibility of having a miscarriage every single day of pregnancy. And it was really comforting to me to have one day go by and I would look at that chart and I'd be like, oh, we're down to this number. Now we're under 10%. Now we're under 5%. Now we have a 2% chance. That made me feel so much better. It just, it just made me focus in on positive celebration. Every day the number would decrease. That means that we had better chances of holding our baby and it just made me feel so much better. So I will link the test, the first response test that I really enjoy using. I will link an eBay, I'll try to find them on eBay for you. I'll link an eBay listing of the first response weeks estimator test. I will also link the um, HCG information for those weeks estimator tests. And then I will link my Doppler and um, then I will also link that website for you. That is it for today's video, guys. I really hope that it has helped you in some, some way possible. Like I said, this is how I go about pregnancy. This is my method. If this isn't your method, if this seems like too much work for you, if this seems too expensive for you, um, if you think that this is like a bad idea, once again, I am just sharing my experience and what I choose to do, what helps me out. I am definitely going to differ than other people. So um, if this isn't for you, that's totally okay. You can just move right on to the next video. But I wanted to get this out there because I think it might help some people. If you guys are new to our channel, like I said before, we'd love to have you come hang out with us. We're about to embark on, oh, I love having babies. <laughs> I love it. I love being pregnant. I love having children. I just love everything about it. I love them so much. The squishy little newborns and then they turn into little demanding toddlers. My children like demand me for food like 24 seven. Like my daughter will just be like, apple. Motherhood is probably one of the most incredible things. If you are newly pregnant with your first, congratulations guys. I mean, congratulations to everyone, but congratulations guys. You are in, you are in our little group of mommies. You're gonna have the most incredible, incredible experience. It's gonna be hard times, but it's gonna be amazing. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. As always, love you. See you in the next one. Bye. The world could fall down, it's gonna be okay. The sun could go.